and welcome to another episode of In the Studio. I'm your host, Lynn Weaver. The program is brought to you by Davis Media Access and we broadcast on Davis Community Television, that is Comcast Channel 15 and AT&T UVerse Menu 99. We're also online at dctv.davismedia.org, so log on and check us out. You can check our schedule and you can view some of our other program, including many previous episodes of In the Studio. Today's topic is the Anarchy Roller Derby, our very own woodland-based, uh, charming, and renowned group of uh, ladies who are going to explain to us what the game is all about. We'll also have, we are delighted to have, uh, we are delighted to have uh, the uh, commissioner of the game, uh, of the, the roller derby, uh, Jerry uh, Seltzer. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I, uh, I'm delighted to have you here. So we perhaps we're going to start by asking you to introduce yourselves. Uh, Jen, why don't you start? <laughs> Thank you so much. My name is Jen, and my derby name is Ruby the Wrecker. And I just fell in love with the sport, and I'm so excited. I've been skating with these girls since February. Can you tell us what positions you play? W I'm mostly a blocker, because <laughs> I'm pretty good at blocking. Um, but one of these days, i got to get one jam in. Yes. Just because. And I believe you're the secretary as well. Yes, yes. for the, the league, yes. Anarchy Roller Derby League, I'm the board secretary. Wonderful. And for our audience who hasn't seen your beautiful rubies, can oh. you turn your head a little bit? <laughs> there <Ruby>. they are. <laughs> Ruby the Wrecker. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank and you. And then we have Jerry. Would you like to talk a little bit about yourself? Introduce yourself. I'm Jerry Seltzer. I have the official title of the Commissioner of Modern Roller Derby, which serves some 1,462 leagues in 41 countries, encompassing 100,000 uh, people who are skating, mostly women, but men. And as Commissioner, I could not be more excited than uh, to introduce and have our very own team here in Woodland. Thank you so much, Jerry. And I'm, I, I must say that I'm particularly grateful uh, that you have come to our show today because you, you came all the way from Sonoma and you are such a, a renowned, uh, you know, a roller derby extraordinaire. So I'm counting on you to give us a little bit of a history later on in the interview of how the, the game started and uh, the game in general, the sport, I should say. Uh, but before that, Lori, why don't you introduce yourself? I, thank you, Lynn, for having us this evening. My name is Lori Cleland, and I am a founder, the president, and a blocker. My roller derby name is Miss L Fire, Missile Fire, because in the words of Wanda Jackson, I cause destruction like an atom bomb. But at this point, we're new, so sometimes it's destruction mostly to my own team. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome all. Now, I'll start by asking Lori, how did you get involved in this uh, bizarre <laughs> it, it, sport game? It, it is quirky and it is kind of viewed as a subculture, yeah. but um, I had two brothers growing up and so we always roughhoused a lot and my mom didn't let me watch roller derby when I was a kid uh, because it was uh, kind of a tawdry thing to see. And as an adult, I've always been interested. I always felt like it was strong women that were empowered. And I started kicking it around a couple years ago. And I own my own business. And when my husband and I discussed it, we felt maybe it wasn't a good lifestyle decision then to be self-employed and be getting knocked down all the time. And <laughs> the bug just kept like coming after me and coming after me. And finally, I said, I'm going to do this. And I got a taste of derby. And I enjoyed the sport, but didn't necessarily embrace the group I was with and felt this, we can change this. We can make Derby a positive thing. And I told my husband, I want to start a league. I don't even know how to do it, but you know, God bless Google. And we went home that night and figured it out. And I called a few friends and I said, I think we can make this something for 
the women that play and for our community and that we can help give back. And then came anarchy. Well, that's wonderful. Now, can you uh, tell us a little bit about the team? And we're going to show a picture of the team sure. as well. So how many of you are and, uh, uh, and what, uh, what brought you together? How did you, did you advertise? We did advertise. Yes. Yeah. yes, so we had an event called an open call. Yeah. And I own a business and it has a nice courtyard. So we did some advertising and recruiting. And um, there were only about four of us involved at that point. And we really, it was like on a prayer, fingers crossed please let women show up to this. And of course we offered food and beverages because people <laughs> like free things. And when we got them there, what we really tried to stress, we were so like overwhelmed with like over 20 people showing up. And I just said a little prayer and I'm like, if I can get three or four of these women, like we can make this happen. And we, our mission is uh, fun, fitness and friendship. And so our larger goal in all of this is that down the road we have a junior team and we're raising money and giving back to our community. So, But that is wonderful. It is, and we, yes. we, we got some to show up, and then now what it, it's word of mouth, and you know people are showing up at work, and they're showing off their bruises instead of hiding them, and their little trophies, and they're like, hey, look what I got. And other women are like, wow, what is this? And it's such an <laughs> adrenaline release. But... What happens on the track stays on the track. When we leave, we're telling each other, that was an awesome hit. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's going to hurt in a few days. but um. Well, we're going to go into uh, the injuries later on in the interview. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to say, you know, my picture, when I was uh, researching for this interview, I saw lots of pictures of... Uh, older dames yes. at roller derby and they all had fishnets and tattoos and strange faces <laughs> you know uh, do you uh, do you have oh i'm sorry here's the picture wonderful so here is the uh an anarchy roller yes. derby of, of woodland and um uh, let's see uh laurie can you um point out some of the team players sure. and some of the names. Sure. So Especially the nicknames. I'll, <laughs> I'll start with the beautiful red head with the feathers around in the yes. green and the purple. Um, that's Devious. That's Danielle. But her name is D-V-S. Uh, and she's a jammer. She has a history of coming from a family of speed skaters. So she's a really fast person that the rest of us that are blockers are going to help her get through so she can score points. Right next to her is Belladonna Barbie, and that's Teresa. <laughs> Teresa has, I believe she has a medical position in an office during the day. Um, right next to her is Ruby the Wrecker. We're staying in the back row. Yay! Uh, <laughs> then, there, then there's myself. I'm the only one who did not take my mouth guard out during the picture. Um, the gentleman in the hat is our personal trainer that comes and helps us once a week. And I think we call him Juan Moore, J-U-A-N, because he's always telling us to just do one more. <laughs> and we can't stand uh, doing the planks. Right, that's our coach, the man without hair. That's Loudmouth. He came by that name, honestly. Um, we have Amy next to him. She goes by Lesby Roland. This is where my 42 years of age comes up. I... This it it gonna, doesn't matter. Yeah, and we've got uh, Crash and Burn is in the front row. Yes. Uh, that's Terry. Um, uh, Lita De Mayhem is uh, kneeling down, but not exactly in the front. And that is Deidre. She works at UC Davis. And next to her is Christy, and she's in nursing school, so she's our nurse loose wheels. Um, we have a couple of guest skaters over to the other edge that come and skate with us. Well, you're doing a wonderful job identifying. <laughs> uh, <the laughs> well, if I don't, okay, but I'm leaving one in the front. So that's BB, and she goes by Fatal Fierce. <laughs> and I'm sorry to whomever yeah, I can't yeah, see um, in that picture. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, it, it doesn't matter. Thank you so much for it doing that. So, so, um, okay. Sorry? Yeah. Oh, I just recognize Erica. But I don't know her derby name. I don't remember. Anakin? Uh, it, it, yes. It, her Erica. So, but the, it gives you an alter ego. Yes. So you're, we have women that, we have a, a history teacher on our team that's very quiet, and I would classify her as an introvert. I'm very definitely an extrovert. And we have some other ladies that have joined us that on our normal everyday paths of life, we would have probably never met each other. And everybody comes here. When you start strapping on the gear, all of a sudden the personalities morph a little bit. I'm not going to say they change, but you see people come out of their shells and become this character that 
we could, I couldn't be that working in my business that I own. If I ran up and hip checked every person that I had the opportunity to, I, you know, th I, business would not be good. <laughs> well, what, what you're saying is, uh, is very, very interesting because uh, you're almost speaking like uh, actors in some ways. It, it gives you a chance to be what you'd like to be, perhaps, or you're just trying out a different personality. And that's very important. Uh, as, so it's the culture and the, uh, the philosophy of it, uh, not just the game, which is fascinating. Yes, exactly. Yes. And I think it gives us a chance to embrace a side of ourselves that society may normally frown upon. Yes. But in this realm, in it's that acceptable context, it's and acceptable. desired. Yes. And that's what yes. brings the crowds. Yes. Uh, Jerry, would you agree with that uh, characterization? Of Not quite. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think what it seriously overlooks, a lot of people who are as old as I am would identify roller derby with what they saw in the 1960s and 70s. Um, and that's when I promoted it. My father invented the game in 35. Leo Seltzer. Leo Seltzer. And then the, I... Uh, the uh, uh, legendary Leo Seltzer. He is to me, yes, yes. definitely. <laughs> And um, I ran it from 1959 to 1973. Um, we were on um, KTVU in San Francisco, KOVR in Stockton. And we taped and had live games all up through the Bay Area. And it was very athletic, five to six days a week, but it was also an exhibition, similar to the Harlem Globetrotters, but not quite all that foolishness. So. I shut down roller derby in 1973. I started Bass Tickets in this area, and then eventually became executive vice president of Ticketmaster for the world. And all of a sudden, 40 years later, some ladies down in Texas, for some reason, and this is the wonder of the internet and social network, they said, let's start roller derby. And they did. And one lady had just come out of boxing training um, and named La Muerta, and <laughs> that's her skating name. And they said, what should we call it? I said, well, why not a bout? I still have trouble with that. I still call them games. But that's where bout comes from. The object of the game, which we ought to get into, is very simple. There's five members of each team. Uh, it's the only game where you're allowed to be on offense and defense at the same time. The object is for the skaters to break out of the pack, circle the track, come up from behind, and for each member of the opposing team they pass, they get a point. That's as simple as the game is. There's no ball, there's no pellet, there's time periods. But I think here's the most important thing, and this is the only objection that I have of just saying, yes, uh, we're going to have a name, we're going to have this. ESPN has rated the 10 toughest sports participatory for men and women, and roller derby is one of them. Uh, they, they go to boot camp, there's intensive training, CrossFit, a lot of work. And these, don't think these people are not athletes. The championship team of two years ago, the Ole Rollers from Olympia, Washington, was entirely composed of the Olympic speed skating championship team, ice skating. And they brought a whole thing into it. So um, you see so many things in this that say it's a way of life for women. It's an escape from their everyday life while they mm -hmm. can still keep it, mm -hmm. but they build this relationship. Um, as I say, there's 100,000 in the world. Just two weeks from now, mm -hmm. there is going to be the roller con in Las Vegas. 5,000 people will come from around the world. Extraordinary. Uh, from Australia, from Singapore, from uh, China. From Woodland. From Woodland. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's take a look. We have a video of uh, a clip of the game. So we can. The current the game or the old game? <laughs> uh, well, it's a game. It's okay. not the anarchy game. Very good. But it's a, it's a very short video that illustrates uh, how the game is played. Very good. So I think our, our viewers who may not uh, know anything about the roller derby will enjoy it, hopefully. So. The basics of flat track roller derby. Brought to you by the Hammer City Roller Girls. The game of roller derby is played on roller skates. The players wear helmets, elbow pads, wrist guards, knee pads, and not much else. The track is flat, not banked. Each 
30 minute half is broken down into shifts called jam. The group of eight players at the front is called the pack. The pack is made of players who play the position of blocker. Behind the pack is the two jammers. The jammers are the most important players on the track and are marked by a large star on their helmet. When the whistle blows, the jammers try to skate their way through the pack and out the other side. But they will be met with the hips, booty, and shoulders of the opposing team's blockers. When two bodies make contact on the track, this is called a block. Once the jammers have skated their way through the pack the first time, they're ready to begin scoring. They earn a point every time they legally pass a member of the opposing team. The team with the most points at the end of the game wins. The jammers will fail to earn points if they pass the opposing blockers illegally. Any player who performs an illegal block will earn a penalty. So what's illegal? Elbows. Tripping, back blocking, and passing out of bounds. Any player who receives a major penalty has earned a trip to the penalty box. The jam ends when the lead jammer places her hands on her hips, or when two minutes has elapsed. 30 seconds later, a new jam begins, and the whole thing starts again. Dynamite. Would you, uh, how would you rate uh, this, uh, this clip? Is it uh, accurate? I think so. It gives a really good description of what <laughs> Jerry, happens. Jerry, do you, what well, do you think? Well, yeah, our game was bank track, and there's still some bank track, but obviously the cost and the ability to set up and tear down, it's a flat track game now mainly. And you should know there's over two dozen leagues within 60 miles of us, so they will be skating other cities uh, from Rohnert Park up to uh, Mendocino, uh, you know, all through the area. So there's going to be competition around. And we do not want to scare the women who may want to participate. You come out, you're going to get in the best shape of your life. And the other thought is, well, gee, I'm not 18, I can't do that. Part of, uh, on the uh, website uh, of Facebook, there is Derby Over 40. There are 2,300 members around the world of women and some men who are between the ages of 40 and 70, and they are not skating a master's type game. Um, as she'll tell you, they have to qualify on all the same principles as everyone else. And they're very strict on what they, uh, they're capable of doing because you want to keep injuries to a minimum. Yes, and let's talk about injuries. Uh, and uh, I'm going to ask with uh, Jen, uh, Jen or uh, uh, Ruby the Wrecker. <laughs> uh, what are the most common injuries that, uh, that you see with the roller derby uh, players? Well, bruises are <laughs> the biggest injury, I think, along with uh, rink rash. And that would just be a nice little scraping of skin against whatever surface you're skating on. Um, so I think most injuries are pretty minimal like that. You're not going to walk away with a black eye or, and hopefully probably not a, a broken arm. Um, and maybe some concussions could happen, but you wear helmets. But if you fall and you hit your, I mean, hopefully there's not too many injuries. It, it really comes down to the training that the league offers you and yes. being smart on your skates and really having a strong core. Jerry mentioned the amount of work that gets put into it and that's why we have a personal trainer that comes once a week and puts us through a regime that he encourages us to do throughout the week. A lot of us have our own personal trainers that we see. I personally, I started Derby in January and I'm about four or five sizes down from where I started. And my first practice that I went to, I thought I was going to die. I was coming off a respiratory infection. I had an asthma attack. I couldn't make it around the rink. I felt like I was on uh, ice. I, I, it was not the skating that and, I remembered as a child. And I haven't told child. you how sexy you are. <laughs> <laughs> and we, you know, in doing research for this, too, when I was like, okay, I dig this, and I, I really like to hit. All right, I know that sounds bad, but I had brothers, and my mom would say, I'm going to cook dinner. You guys go outside and wrestle, and don't come back in until everybody's tired. And so I started th thinking, though, like, more so than that, there's got to be more to it than just chicks dressing up and knocking each other out. 
And I, upon doing research, I found out, like, according to the presidential fitness program, based on a 143-pound woman, if she skates moderately for an hour, she can burn close to 700 calories. Oh. Skating moderately. Yes. We are on that track two and a half hours. Yes. At least. Yes. Two to three times a week. So you're really... I was going to ask you, how often do you <clears throat> practice? So yes. we practice Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. And yes. we practice right now at an outdoor um, inline hockey track Mm -hmm. in Woodland. It's at the corner of Southwood and Ashley. Mm -hmm. Wednesdays are the nights that we take in our new skaters. We yes. do have seasoned skaters there that are furthering their skills because as Jerry mm -hmm. mentioned, we do have, we are chartered. Yes. And so different leagues based on their geographical location tend to lean one way or the other to a, a rule set. Each rule set that a league associates themselves with has what they call their minimum skills. And I think that ours is two or three pages long mm -hmm. and it requires you from the basics of fluid strides, using your arms, we learn about six different ways to fall properly so that it becomes muscle memory. So when you do take that impromptu hit or you trip, you're not even thinking about it. Your body goes into that uh, position, you're tucking your fingers so that they don't get skated over. We also have to, when we hit the ground, we have got to be up in three seconds, yeah. that's the rule. So it's, it's all about a quick return and being yeah. safe. And, we have to jump a minimum of six inches in the air, both feet up at the same time. We have to jump 18 inches laterally. We have to skate 27 laps in five it's minutes. It's very humbling. Oh, you, we have people who are supreme athletes that get out there and they start yeah. to do these items. And this is only on roller skates, mm -hmm. not... No inlines. Inlines. Quad, no inlines. Quad, quad skates. skates. Only wheels. quad skates, <coughs> yes. Jerry, you wanted to... Uh, to uh, one thing uh, I wanted to say yeah. is that there is protective equipment that is required from knee guards to elbows to helmet and that's checked very carefully don't think you're just going to get out there of and, course. Uh, and not be protected the other thing and I know she's about to tell you this if you haven't been on skates for a long time or if you are on skates yes on Wednesday here's where you should come yes so Wednesdays is our open intake for new skaters. Last night we had six women show up and it was very refreshing. It was all different ages. We had a 19 year old and we had someone close to 50 and it spanned throughout there. And we like to say that they look like baby giraffes in the beginning <laughs> trying to walk. It's very stilty. And about an hour and 40 minutes later, I had six women who were skating fluidly, doing what we call crossing over. It's an equal transfer of weight in order to propel yourself around the track. And it's amazing to see people get that confidence when they show up and they don't want anybody to look at them and they're falling down just standing. It's amazing what we you say. We can teach yes. you to skate. And so you can go to our site. It's anarchyderby.com. I was going to call and for that. we have a, a... Say that again. Anarchyderby.com. <laughs> A-N-A-R-C-H-Y. <laughs> Yes. D-E-R-B-Y dot com. And you're also on Facebook. We are on Facebook. On Facebook, yes. you'll find us under Anarchy Derby Dames. So Anarchy Derby is our league name. And yes. Anarchy Derby Dames is the name of our first team. And we, our goal is to have about five or six teams, to have a junior team. But to start, we need women to show up on Wednesdays. All right. And we have some loner gear. I'm going to think about it. <laughs> we, well, although I've never skated in doesn't my make life. It doesn't matter. No. We have women who have never skated that show up, and we teach them to skate. In our era of roller derby, 80% of our skaters had never skated before, but they saw it on television, and they came, and they wanted to. One of the very important things, and that's what these ladies are working on, and if I can help, I will. They're trying to get a permanent facility here in Yolo County yes. so that there will be one place they can come to year round. So I'm sure you're going to hear more about that in the future. Well, this is very nice. It's very interesting that you brought that up, uh, Jerry, because I was going to ask about the, the locale or the oval rink. Uh, is that the, what you refer to as the, uh, the facility? No. no. It has to be some, uh, an indoor building so that in the winter they're not skating outside. Oh. And I know they're working on that right now. There is nothing they can say right now. But, but that's going to become extremely Wonderful. important. Wonderful. And I imagine you have sponsors then, and you do some fundraising. Yes, to both of those. Mm -hmm. we, <laughs> we are in our infancy as a league. Yes. So we are ever-evolving and growing. 
and all the movement has been positive and forward. Uh, we had a fundraiser and we did donate. Uh, we're donating a portion back to the Autistic Foundation Program in Woodland. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, we want to help as many areas in our community as we can. We're not bouting right now. So as far as sponsorship, what we're asking from our community, and we have about eight businesses right now that are sponsoring us. So they're letting us come in and hold events in there so that we can get our name out in the community and get more skaters and get more support. It is imperative that we get a building because we are adjusting the times that we skate on days that it's 108. Yes. You know, we, you need, we need to be inside where inside. the environment is controlled or we really make sure that everyone's hydrated and that we stop and give them that chance to get hydrated. Um, when it rains, we won't be able to skate outside. Yes. This city's been very gracious in letting us skate there. And um, it's, it is nice because we're outdoors. We hang the banners of our sponsors out there. So they're getting advertisement three times a week. But ideally, my goal, I believe if you put things in the universe, they will come to you. Jerry. It, I would love for our league in five years to not only be a flat track league, but to be a bank track. The, the, the closest bank track is... Uh, at Los Angeles or Everett, Washington. So what do you mean by <clears throat> bank track? So I'm going to let Jerry take that. Jerry. If you have that book there, Roller Derby to Roller Jam. Yes. I, see, I, uh, we, we, used to have, we traveled with the bank track. And we could get it on a 30-foot trailer. Actually, the bank was about three feet high. It was about a five-foot bank, went to a straightaway, and came around. It's like the speed track that you may see in... Uh, in bicycle races in yes. the Olympics. Um, and we used to take that. We could set it up in three hours, tear it down in one. Uh, sold out Madison Square Garden. Sold out the Oakland Stadium over here, 35,000 people. My goodness. So, I mean, roller derby was huge. Yes. And it's going to be again. Um, but the fact that Woodland now will be on this national map, one of the 600 leagues in America, and we'll end up eventually playing everybody. So it's not just your local high school anymore. Yes. It's now it's growing. the anarchy. Do you hope that it will become an Olympic sport at some point? Um, that's going to be a long way off. A it will be great. Off. Roller sports have not been added to the Olympics for a terribly long time. Yes. Uh, the application was made as a demonstration sport in 2020, and it was just turned down. Yeah. Uh, I think we're more interested in getting a national television set up, that's, eventually. A national network, yeah, that's, a national league, a national network, it's going to happen. This is the fastest growing women's sport in the world. Oh, and men are competing now, yeah. but not to the level of women. It's wonderful, I've learned so much. I'm afraid we're out of time. Do you have a one second, a through second uh, comment here? I wake up every day waiting to go skate. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Ruby the Wrecker, the Commissioner, and the Missile Fire. AnarchyDerby.com. Uh, yes. It's what's for breakfast. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank Lunch you and dinner. Much. And thank you all for watching. Uh, you can stream us. Uh, you, can, uh, you can watch this program again by going to our website at dctv.davismedia.org. Thank you for watching. I'm your host. Lynn Weaver, see you next time.